As we begin today, Pentecost Sunday, there are weeks in the history of our nation where things happen and change just about everything. I saw someone posting on social media about the successful space launch and having that be over against the drama unfolding in cities across the United States due to the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis that just was very reminiscent of the 1960s. And it's a struggle when we try and find all the right words. If you look at social media, there are probably 50 billion people trying to find the right words repeatedly all the time. And I don't want to get you too excited right in this moment because I don't know that I have all the magic words either. When I started in ministry, my first five years were serving a parish in Northwest Minnesota. During those five years, because of our son's heart condition, we spent a lot of time at Minneapolis Children's Hospital, which is 10 blocks north of where George Floyd was killed. We got a sense of that neighborhood, although typically, like a lot of white folks, we would drive in from a distance to that neighborhood, use the services of that hospital, and then drive back out. So driving through is not quite the same thing. When I was looking at the readings for this Sunday, I was trying to understand how the story of Pentecost might interact with the events that are continuing to unfold. And there's just a profound number of things that overlap. When we think of Pentecost, and we think of the systems and structures of this world that we are a part of, structures of the church, structures of community, of the economy, of the government, of law enforcement, us, all the things that we are meshed up in, we don't like it when things get messy. We don't like it when things stray from the status quo too much and create fractures, things that cause us to have to stress and worry. In fact, in the reading today, all of those voices in different languages were sharing the prophecy that was a part of the text that I read following. Blood and fire. Blood and fire. Suddenly, this doesn't feel like a reading from the first century, does it? Feels like a reading that could have been just this morning, and in fact was. And when we read from Scripture, it is today and now. Fire and blood, a violent wind. There is a sense on Pentecost that the Holy Spirit is cracking things open. And there are a lot of us that don't like having things cracked open. Why can't people just mind their own business? Why do they have to start doing all of these things and upset the apple cart? Why, why, why? These stories are complex. Reports that all of the arrests on one of the evening in Minneapolis came from people who had come in from out of state. There are troubling stories as a part of this. But at the very end, we circle back to the beginning of this story, where there was a man by the name of George Floyd who was pinned to the ground for almost 10 minutes, gasping for breath, begging to breathe. Breath. Breathe. In the text today, we hear about a violent wind the Gospel that I chose this morning to read talks about Jesus breathing on the disciples. But if we go back even further in Scripture to the beginning of the Bible in Genesis, we hear about a wind from God moving over the face of the deep at creation. And in the second chapter of Genesis, profoundly, God creates humankind from the dust of the earth and breathes into us God's Spirit and thereby our very lives. Our very lives. When we come to the end of our lives, when we are no longer able to breathe God's Spirit, 
we return to God. But when we think of the stories of this week, the image of a police officer kneeling on the back of George Floyd's neck, choking the breath of God out of him, we are mindful not just of individuals, but of systems that we are all trapped up into that choke the breath of God out of individuals in a very literal sense and out of communities to marginalize and remove voices. Which voices? Often these are voices of the poor. They are voices of people of color. When we think about Pentecost, you saw the video during the reading, all of these voices, the Holy Spirit is speaking through all of these languages, all of them. Not just the voices that speak the same language that I do. Not just the voices from people who look like I do not just from people who are the same color as I am, and not only when what they are saying makes me comfortable and perhaps reinforces what I have been saying. Pentecost is a chaotic mess because the Holy Spirit is bursting out of every voice and every corner. And the entire system is getting knocked over. Who are these people? These are the people who occupied the temple for days, grinding the economy of Jerusalem to a standstill, even in a place that had its own police. They stood and occupied that space in a way that dominated that community. There was a full-throated voice that had been kneeled on and crushed out until that point. In my mind, when we think of Pentecost and this outpouring and overflowing of the Holy Spirit, there's a couple of things that come to mind, particularly in light of this week's events that we need to be mindful that our voices of the Holy Spirit are not the only ones that are being heard in our churches, in our boardrooms, in our communities, in our schools. We need to be ensuring that voices that have been suppressed might find space to speak, even when it makes us uncomfortable, or perhaps even when it costs something to us. But in addition to listening, we need to be mindful of the way in which we participate in systems that actively crush out the voice of God and the breath of God. We are mindful of this tragic image this last week as George Floyd gasped for breath, but we are mindful that it is not the only story. And we are not the only nation. We are mindful that our systems of things, of economies, of politics, of religion, often grinds some people down, often the poor, often people of color. Now, if it wasn't for the events of this week, we might be talking about COVID-19 crossing 100,000 deaths in this nation alone. Deaths that we know come from a loss of breath, right? An inability to breathe the breath of God any longer. Something that crushes, crushes our lungs. And we know as well that this too strikes communities of color more tragically than others. This is not by accident. This is by centuries of design. Pentecost today encourages us to understand that when the Holy Spirit cuts loose, it is not for our financial gain, 
It is not for our comfort, but it is to bring good news, life, and the Holy Spirit to all corners of the earth. Not just where we think they deserve it, not just where we think they look like us or sound like us, but in every corner. I don't know that these are all the thoughts for this week, but I hope you hear this Pentecost story as one that is jarring and that we might reflect in this week on how we might bring life instead of death and how we might listen instead of speaking. Amen.